And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Oregon Trail game, Journey to Willamette Valley. And you might say, uh, excuse me, Mr. Vassell, but uh, didn't you already review this game? Well, kind of, sort of. Uh, let's see, last year, uh, a game came out called the Oregon Trail, also based, both of these are based on the old computer game that so many of us played in our childhood. And uh, this one here, it, the, the original game, the card game, was a pretty horrendous affair. It was a bad game. Uh, I gave it a two instead of a one because uh, Jason died in the first turn and I found that extremely humorous. But that's out of 10. It was a really bad game. But this one here, designed by Daryl Andrews, who's designed some very popular games like Sagrada. It's from the same company, actually, but this one's a big board game. The original one was just a small card game. Is this better? Well, it can't, it, it'll be hard for it to not be better. But what we want to know is, is it a good game? Let's find out. Okay, so here's the board. Each person's going to get a wagon that they put here. Uh, the players are going to have their own wagon board here. They're going to start with a pistol. That's what the little gray cube stands for. And I got these happy people here who start with a health of five. And you're going to be trying to get them uh, to the end of the trail. So the best thing to do is kind of talk about the end game scoring, which incidentally is printed on the board here. So at the end of the game, you're going to get $500 for your driver making it, which they probably will. $100 for each point of your family member's health. So if you manage to go through without losing any health, and you have four times five, you have 20, 20, $2,000 plus 500 for your driver, great. Then you, if you pick up a hitchhiker, as the game goes by, orange hitchhiker cubes might show up. You can pick up them, they're worth 400 each. You lose 100 for each column that you are not here. So if you're behind someone else and you don't make it, you lose $100 for that. And as the game goes by, people are going to die. And depending on which column they died in, that's how much money you'll lose. So when someone dies, you put them there with a little headstone. And then at the end of the game, I'm going to lose $400 for that person having died. So on your turn, the first thing you'll do is discover a trail, and players will have some tiles, and they're going to be putting out another tile here on the board, connecting them, and you can't, you're, you have to kind of build out evenly, you can't have this one long shoot here, and there's no rules like in Carcassonne where things have to match up, but, uh, you know, having them match up will probably help you. Then players have actions that they're going to be able to do on their turn. Each player gets three actions, so you can move, so moving a space. However, if you move on a road, you can keep moving all along that road. When you get to a river, as part of your move action, you can stop and cross the river, but that takes up the rest of your turns. Or you can try to roll on a regular side of die to... You have to roll that number or more on the die to get over the river, and if you fail, then someone on your, on your party has to lose a health point. Uh, you can also hunt when you hunt. All right, you have to be in a spot that hunts. So here's a tree, that's a spot that I can hunt in. The person next to you is going to draw the hunting card. Ooh, it's a squirrel. If you kill him, you'll get a food, yay. And then you're going to pick, without having seen the squirrel, one of these numbers for each pistol you have. So maybe I'll be like, I'll pick a four, or I'll pick a two, whatever you pick. If you hit the animal, then you got it. If you get a shotgun later on in the game, that's this big one, you can put it on between two numbers. So this hits a three and a four, and a one or a to. Or if you get a compass later on, you can discard that compass to see the card before you put your gun out, which basically just means you hit it. So I don't know what. Anyhow, uh, if you do hit the animal, you'll get the amount of food on it. So you can see there's all sorts of animals in here. Look how much food a bison gives you as opposed to a squirrel. There's rabbits and bears. Oh, my. Um, another thing you do on your turn is you can buy or sell. If you are at a fort or a town, you can buy meat, medicine, pistols, and coppices. These are the small little items. And if you're at a town, when these towns show up, different items will be here. So, for example, spare parts and a shotgun. And you can buy these, but remember, you only have so much room in your wagon. Happily, you can buy at, you can buy these upgrades here. You can buy wagon extensions, and you can buy additional oxen, which I think it's kind of neat. They do fit kind of on the board here. You can make your make your wagon bigger and add the oxen in like that. 
and that gives you more space and the oxen help you move faster. Uh, when you're selling goods, you got to go by the top card here in town and that's how much money goods will give you. And then every time you do it, you will flip the card over and then the next person will probably have to pay different prices the next time they go to a town to sell. So that's what players are doing. They're moving, hunting, buying, picking up hitchhikers, and selling. Once you start your turn outside of a fort or outside of your Independence, Missouri, you have to draw a calamity card at the beginning of your turn. So here you can't use roads this turn. That's not a good calamity. Let's see if we can find a better calamity. Oh, we have medicine. See, not all calamities are bad. What about the next one? $100. I'm doing pretty good here. Oh, a family member dies. Period. But you can avoid by spending a meat or reaching a fort this turn. You better believe you're going to try to... Oh, dysentery. Another family member dies. But if you reach a fort or spend a medicine, you can avoid that. Oh, more dysentery. What else we got? An additional ox. And so you can see all sorts of things. Broken legs, pickpockets, dead ox, thieves, gun malfunction, food barrel gives you extra meat, loss, someone dies. Now, there's a lot of these things that are going to happen. So you're going to have to draw one of these at the beginning of each turn. Also, at the end of your turn, you're going to have to feed your family. Oh, man, you have to pay a food for your family or else somebody, everyone in your family is going to lose a health. Not only that, if you move onto these cold areas and you don't have warm clothes, you'll lose health that way. So you can see there's lots of different ways that people can die. And you're just going to keep doing that until somebody gets to Willamette Valley here at the end, in which case you add up the scores like I told you, or until someone puts the last tile on the board. Either one of those will trigger the end of the game, and then whoever has the most money is the winner. I'm kind of of two minds on the production of this game. Some things are great. I love the, the boards like this. I like using these cubes for people that when eventually they turn into a tombstone, that's really neat. I'm not as fond of this board. An individual tile might look neat, but when you put them together like this, it's really kind of ugly and just doesn't look good. They don't match and that's bothersome. The Calamity cards are decent quality, even though all these things, Typhoid, Extreme Cold has that on it. But for the most part, there's not a lot of pictures on them. And I kind of find it, I, I get that they use cubes because, you know, when you're filling up the wagon, you can put four small cubes in one space. So that's kind of neat how that works. But still, using these cubes doesn't really give me any kind of thematic connection to what they are. Um, but you know, for the most part, the components are pretty cool. They are pretty nice. It's not hard to play the game. There's just a few things I don't like. Mostly that, again, when you add these tiles, the board doesn't look very nice at all. Okay, so you've seen how the game plays here. The the Oregon Trail, and it's going to play very similar to the computer game to some degree. So there's good and bad things. I've already talked about the components, a little bit about my thoughts with them. Uh, here I'm going to talk about gameplay itself. You got to go into this, again, going back to the original, it's definitely better than the card game that came out last year, but again, that's not a high bar to cross. This game is so full of luck that I don't find it that entertaining. I get the nostalgic factor about this. If you like the Oregon Trail computer game and you've been looking for a way to bring that computer game to a board game, this is a way to do so. But let's, let's have some real talk here for a brief moment. And I know this is going to irritate some people and so I apologize for that in advance, but sometimes the truth hurts. Here's the fact. You know the Oregon Trail computer game? It's not a good game. I know, I know, I know. We all loved it, played it as a kid and stuff. It's not a good game. It's okay at best. You can do everything right and you can die and it's, it's historically, it's educational, it teaches you all sorts of things, it teaches you how tough it was to be, something like that, but it's not fun. And a lot of the fun we have is clouded by nostalgia. However, if you nostalgically think that was fun, then you will nostalgically like this game. But if you're looking for a good game, it's not really here. I don't... I want to be clear, it's not a knock against the designer. I think the designer brought the Oregon Trail to life as a board game, but I don't think it makes for a fun game. You're taking a random event at the beginning of your turn, which could be good for you half the time, and for someone else, be devastatingly negative every single time. You could die just by a series of unfortunate events. Yes, this game definitely gives you more ways to ignore them than the card game did, 
Yes, this game has a little bit of a buying and selling, but that could be totally just luck. Hey, I found an extra ox. Now I can move farther. Look, I found this hitchhiker. I picked him up. Hey, look, I, I, I found a nice trail. I can move this way. Hey, look, I got winter clothes, so I can now move over the winter spots. No problem. And you just keep having dysentery and all kinds of nasty things happen to you. That can definitely happen in this game. And so there's nothing really like that attracts me to the game. I sit there and go, wee, I'm just trying to survive in a cooperative game setting. And that's kind of mind boggling to me. Why Oregon Trail hasn't been made as a co-op game where you're all working together. I mean, well, I guess the card game was a co-op game, but like why this one wasn't some big co-op game and where these negative events are gonna happen and you're working together to try to stave them off. Here, you can sit and watch someone else just kind of breeze through. By breeze through, I mean struggle less than you. This game is not a breeze by any means, but someone else can just find good things and negative things can keep happening to you. I don't find that fun. I find that unbalanced and crazy random. But some people, the nostalgic is going to overcome that for them. But I wouldn't want to play this with my kids. I don't like how the tiles don't match up. That, so you're just kind of putting tiles down. And you have to remember the different rules. You move on here. This bad thing will happen. This bad thing will happen. You have someone die. You pay funeral expenses because you're farther away from the final town. Thematically, that doesn't make sense. We're just going to dig a ditch and stick them in it, honestly. Uh, at that point and then the the hunting which it, it's like a cool concept like pick a number which number do you want this number shows up more often than the other numbers but it gives less food and but it's still just random it's still randomly picking a number at the end of the day it seems cool like the shotgun hits two different numbers it, it like when i read it i was like wow this kind of sounds interesting and it is kind of interesting but it's still random just like finding a hitchhiker is random. Finding winter clothes and medicine, which can be really critical, is random. So it's a big pile of random in a box with a nice set of rules and a lot of interesting things will happen and you might be able to tell some cool stories about your game at the end of the day, but not enough to keep me involved with it. So yes, definitely better than the first one. Definitely brings out the spirit of the game to some degree but definitely not a game I want to play again. So that's Oregon Trail game, Journey to Willamette Valley. Dice Tower Judgment, good for nostalgic purposes.